Hi everyone. Today I am so glad to introduce you to a good friend of ours. My name is Ashley. I'm one of the co-founders of Beta Change. And today with us we have Mary Shi, who is currently living in Paris, completing her PhD. Welcome, Mary. Thank you, Ashley. Hi everyone. <laughs> My name is Mary, originally from China. It's really happy to share the experience to living on board with diabetes through the Beta Change. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, now I'm studying my PhD as living in Paris. And my thesis is mainly focusing on how to use a technique uh, like AI to better understand the diabetes online space like uh, specifically to understand the connection or the relationship among the website, uh, diabetes uh, related website and through the hyperlinks. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, so as Mary mentioned, today we're going to be talking about Mary's experience living abroad with diabetes. And coming up, we've got International Women's Day on the 8th of March. So we thought that today would be a perfect time to share her story. So as Mary said, she's um, currently doing her PhD. Um, and But what we want to hear is sort of, Mary, your diagnosis story and what you've been involved with in the diabetes community. Sure. Yeah, I was diagnosed with my diabetes when I was 18 years old. So during that time, I mean, I faced the critical year for the university's entry examinations in China. And it's a quite a uh, pressure and work a lot every day. So actually, I have my symptoms like uh, the continuous hunger, thirsty, and easily to get uh, tired and lose my weight. It's like one year before. But since nobody around me knows what is a diabetes, type 1 especially, and they only think the older people can get diabetes, the teenagers never thinking about it. So everybody only thinking it's because of pressure, because I work too much. So my mom continued giving me the food, giving me the be beverage, I eat and lose weight, and it's a continual fatigue. So yeah, after one year, I went to the hospital and my blood sugar is pretty high, 30 something. Yeah, because before I went to the hospital, yeah, I drink the Coca-Cola and uh, eat, yeah, eat the ice cream. Then doctor say, okay, type one. <laughs> so yeah, this is like a diagnosed story. Wow, so it took you one year before you went to the hospital. Who? Wow, mm -hmm. crazy. And tell us more about the work that you've done in the diabetes community uh, back in China. Yes, yeah, so because before in China, we don't really have the diabetes communities. So in the first five years, I really feel lonely. But uh, in the 2011, I was choosing, I mean, it's a good opportunity to represent China during the International Diabetes Federation and they have the Young Leader Program. And uh, basically that is my first time to really join the diabetes communities. Then I feel, wow, a lot of the people have the same conditions with me. Then I get more involved in the diabetes community globally. Mm -hmm. And also I do lots of like the advocacy activities in China. So the good news is the foundation for the type 1 diabetes in China was just a kick off the end of last year. I wish it's a good beginning, yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. So you've done so much in terms of diabetes advocacy in China. Tell us how did you end up in Paris doing your PhD? Ah, okay. So after I joined, uh, yeah, <laughs> after I joined IDF, but I thought, uh, yeah, my passion is to do something related to the diabetes because I got inspired by the people I met and I really wanted to be the person who can inspire others. <laughs> so, yeah, after the graduate of my master's degree, I get an opportunity to apply. There is one Chinese uh, scholarship and then the Paris Sorbonne University is a cooperation program. 
And I apply that due to the um, diabetes is now one of the super big and uh, urgent issues China need to face. So luckily, my proposal got accepted. Then, yeah, I got to the Chinese government uh, the scholarship and uh, now I'm here to study related to the diabetes topic. Congratulations. Because uh, I, I'm a researcher, I know how difficult it is to get a scholarship. So that in itself is a huge achievement. Uh, uh, tell, <laughs> tell us where you're at with your PhD at the moment. Sorry, the PhD? Yeah, so whereabouts? Because I understand you're almost finishing your PhD. Ah, not yet, because uh, my PhD is the three years program, and I've been here like uh, two years so far. Mm -hmm. So this is my last year of my PhD, uh, lots of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I can graduate to successful. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure I have a lot of faith in you. <laughs> yeah, sure. so, so I guess moving from China to Paris, that's a huge change. Um, tell us what it's like moving to a brand new country and living there. You mean the challenging, what it's like the big challenging I man? Yeah. Yeah, the challenges. I have to say the biggest part is always the beginning. And mm -hmm. my biggest challenging actually is communications because I don't speak French. So all the work alignment is about the English. And you know the French don't really speak a good English. Yes. So at the beginning, it's really tough for me to communicate about the make appointment with the doctor and go to the pharmacy to get insulin and blah, blah, and so on. But the good point is the friends, they really have the good health care system to help the people with diabetes. So like before I was in China, I don't have my pump because uh, I cannot afford it. But here it's like uh, everything is 100% covered by the insurance, social security. Mm -hmm. So I have my pump now and including the free style. So it's more convenient for me to, to manage my diabetes. But at the beginning, first six months, I need to deal with my uh, social security. Yeah. It takes like the 10 months to get my social security. Wow. So I bought all the insulin and all the devices to test my blood sugar, including the test strips, all from China. So I prepared, yes, like the eight months. Then I got the social security after that. Uh, you still need to have the patience to wait because here in the public hospital, usually it takes like eight to nine months oh, to wow. appointment with a diabetes specialist. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you definitely need a patient to wait. <laughs> yeah, too. Almost like one year, I saw the first time my diabetes specialist in France. Wow, that's crazy. Yes, but fortunately, I got all my insulin, so it's not that uh, confusing. Then, mm -hmm. if you go to the general doctor, you can basically have the insulin, but like uh, with a pump or the free, uh, free style, yes, you need to wait. Is it the free style libre, like this one? Yeah, we have a same. <laughs> 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 Cool, yeah, so, uh, and the second part, I think the main challenge is about the food because uh, basically I change my daily routine and the food is the most important thing for the diabetes. And uh, I, yes, before I almost eat the rice, now I eat more baguette, croissant, and the bread with more butter. Then before it's like a vegetable, domain now it's more meat domain because they eat lots of meat. But the meat, <laughs> yes, after meat, my blood sugar stabilized. Yeah, yes. all the delicious foods. Yeah, all the delicious food in France. <laughs> in France, so yeah, but they also have a lot of desserts. Yeah, sure. So that would have been a challenge to adjust your di your diabetes management to cope with that. 
Yeah, the food. This is basically on yourself, and mm -hmm. also the doctor, because the mindset with managing diabetes is different, especially for the East and West. I don't know if the people change from the uh, like the German to the France. It's much easier than China to France, or another way around. It's like the French guys go to the China. So yes, uh, here the doctor is more freestyle, not like a strictly what you eat, what you drink. But uh, for me, it's really cool. I mean, but. Uh, yeah, sometimes I feel how to say describe that feeling to like the kids, the parents, mm -hmm. the Western, they more freestyle to raise the kids. It's like a do it every month. But in yeah. China, if the parents love the kids, the way show is like you cannot do this, you cannot do that. Mm -hmm. It's good. So it's a very different way of of some sort of parenting, but also the way the medical system works. Yes. So here the doctor don't like control you and um, yeah, just to give you the advice. So you take it or not. Yeah. But another way, because my blood sugar is not really good, it's always like go up and go down. So my Chinese doctor gave me this advice is to keep ten. Yeah. It's like a stabilizer, better than you get two and then 20 and then 80. Yeah. So, but here the doctor will ask me why you have your 10 and you didn't put more insulin. Now you have a pump, you can have insulin easily. Mm -hmm. So I think if I get like a one, I'm so afraid to get hypo because I yep. know one if for me is like a go super fast. So, yeah. and the doctor here will tell me, yes, you don't need to scared about the hypo. It's just mm -hmm. a psychology issues kind of things. So it's yeah. also a little bit challenging for me, plus the language issues. Yeah. yeah. So there's so many things to think about. You know, you're navigating a different healthcare system, different language, different foods, but also the culture around um, how we approach medicine is different. So you've done so well in two years to cope with all of that. Oh, thank you, Ashley. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way and up. Proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> you should be proud of yourself. A, a good friend of mine lived in Paris for a year um, and she said it was such a challenge because she was learning French to try and speak the language because all the medical terms were so different. So she found it a huge challenge even speaking French to try and get um, insulin and prescriptions and doctor's appointments as well. So I can't imagine having to do it in English in a French-speaking country. <laughs> okay, yeah. We have to have to share some funny stories, but now we continue our topics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so tell me about some of the highlights and some of the good times that you've had uh, living in, in Paris. I'm sure there's many. Okay, so can I say I met my French boyfriend? Oh, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I How did you guys meet? It's uh, through the online dating. Yeah, yeah, and also he's working in IT. Oh, so we have the same topic to share, and he also helped me a lot on the paper stuff because I'm not really a geek guy. But now my thesis is not only about diabetes; more it's like a technology part. So yeah. We share a lot and we quite happy to be together. But that is a good thing I want to mention because uh, I feel more comfortable living here. And mm -hmm. I have to say the people here have the more awareness with the type one diabetes. Mm -hmm. Especially even with the advertisement, uh, they have the super cute, the cartoon to educate the kids. What is a symptom? And what is the basic knowledge of the diabetes? And for me, this is brand new because it's not existing in China. And uh, I already told my diagnosed story because nobody knows. And then after one year, I just uh, to went to the hospital. So thinking about if I got a cantonese and I faint, uh, it's really dangerous. Yeah. So 
here that people don't think type 1 diabetes is a weird thing. They really think, wow, it's just a situation, condition. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I have this, uh, the people meet me on the street, they will say hello to me. <laughs> and yes, when I was in the restaurant, the people are curious about what's this. And they ask me if this is a button. It's like I'm a robot, you turn <laughs> on. <laughs> yes, uh, it's super fun. I mean, but uh, yeah, in China, it's uh, quite not quite like this. Yeah. Most in the situation, you need to hide because otherwise you feel awkward. And then my boyfriend is the same because they're skewed. I mean, China this year has improved a lot. People, especially in the big cities, getting more and more improved social wellness. But you have the discriminations about the job interview, about the relationship, about the marriage. The main reason is because I think the people don't know what is that, and they got scared. Yeah. So here, I mean, I don't need to explain too much for my boyfriend. He can Google by himself what is the type one, <laughs> and uh, now he yes uh, also know how to calculate the calories like one apple, one unit. You know, oh, very eat. good. <laughs> yes, because of rice, we put eight units. Blah blah. Yeah, yeah, I feel more confidence to manage my diabetes under his help, I have to say. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. So do you think in China it's there's a lot more work that needs to be done in terms of raising awareness? Uh, you mean in China? Yeah. Is, um, Will that help? The help to improve in the social awareness. Yeah, so if, this, if people start to the social awareness of type 1 diabetes, do you think that the discrimination and the stigma will reduce as well? Yeah, I think it's definitely. Yeah. yeah. Because I think the really main reason is about the people don't know that. That's the reason people think mm -hmm. it's strange. That's the people scared to accept or they don't want to know. And they think, wow, what's that? And the better I don't I don't hire you or I don't be a girlfriend, boyfriend with you because I don't know. In our mindset, Chinese mindset is like this way. So so if the people yeah. have the awareness about, okay, it's just as a condition. You put insulin, mm -hmm. you manage your diabetes well, and you can live longer. And I mean, I mean, you can have the super healthy life, yeah. happy life. I mean, people, why they refuse you? Why yeah. they dis yeah. So I think there's a lot more change that needs to happen there. And um, it really it starts from you as well, because you started so much in China. Um, do you plan to continue diabetes advocacy in China as well? Yeah, sure. Because now the foundation for the type 1 diabetes already exists. And before, mm -hmm. because we have the Task Force team. So we still are a team. The only way change is before I work in China with them, and then now I work on the internet with them. Oh, fantastic! So I still yes get involved. I'm really happy to to, to help them and to improve the social awareness in China, and that is very important. Yeah, that's good. And there's no better person for it to come from than you, yeah. <laughs> number one champion. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> So, I guess for people who are thinking of going overseas and, and living overseas to study or to travel, um, who also live with diabetes, what advice do you have for them? Yeah, I would like to say, first of all, it's the preparation. It's yeah. like you do everything, you need to know what's your situation of your destination, the country. Not like, oh, that country, I love it, I go. So better you check all the information. The most important thing is how to, you need to do to get a prescription of the insulin and all the suppliers from the doctor. And is it easy to make an appointment with the doctor? How long to work take? and uh, about uh, the devices or the insulin. Because in each country it's different with the insurance, uh, with the dollars, uh, with the Australian dollars, uh, with the Chinese RMB, and if, if it's affordable or not. 
I mean, for example, like in China, I cannot afford the pump, but here I can. But if another way around, maybe you should to think about how you deal with your health care issues. And the second, uh, I brought my insulin the first six months, but it's really depending on the personal situation. It's yep. like how long you were living in the country and how easy to get insulin or not. So yeah, I think preparation is really, really important. And second part, I want to mention is about food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you really don't like the local food or only the pizza, burger, you can affordable. So better you get prepared. Uh, neither you would like to cook at home to get more healthy food or the food you are used to eat. Neither you need to figure out what's the best option for you to get the more healthy local food to stabilize your blood sugar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, third, I think the diabetes community is very important. So try to join the local diabetes community. You can meet the local people with the same situation. They can give you lots of the information. And also, you can make a good friend. Definitely, you will feel super warm and the belongings and the psychologist part. Yeah. And I think that's really important is that it's not just the physical management of diabetes, but it's also the emotional and the psychological aspects as well. And having that support, particularly locally, can help you in terms of getting insulin prescriptions or finding out what to do and how to navigate the system. Absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. I'm just so blown away with how much you've achieved in these two years. <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah, because before I didn't realize it, uh, but when you invited me for this interview, I write uh, something to organize my thoughts, and I really think, wow, it's not a, a big, small challenging. I mean, yeah, that's the reason better you get preparation, not uh, only for the sci uh, physical life, but psychology. Mm -hmm. You need to get a preparation and to face a lot of things. So, yeah. But if you get preparation, trust me, you are living, enjoying the living on board, yes, without any concern. Fantastic. So it's really about doing your homework and being prepared. Homework. <laughs> and what about your family? Do you keep in touch with them quite often? And uh, not really. Okay, so my parents, it's not like a typical parent, uh, the Chinese parents, yes, to control me a lot. And moreover, I'm an adult, 30 plus. <laughs> so, but uh, yes, we were um, chatting through the internet uh, mm -hmm. like regularly. Um, they don't really ask me about the diabetes situation. Yeah, maybe my father will ask, uh, how's your bloody sugar? Is that okay? Um, basically, they are more concerned about my PhD. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. I think maybe they trust me, I can manage my diabetes uh, good. Yeah. So, and that's that's so good to have support from your parents as well. I think that's the best support you can get. Yeah, sure. And well, they're really Mary, me. sorry, yeah. go ahead. Oh, sorry. They are really happy for me to get the pump and the, the freestyle because, yeah, it's a really easy life compared to before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, Mary, thank you so much for joining us again today. Was there anything else you wanted to share before we sort of say goodbye? Um, not really. I think I, yeah, share what I want to share and I'm super happy. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much again for spending some time and sharing your story and your journey and tips with us. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to sort of share it on our Facebook group in the comments below and we can answer them as well and we can tag Mary in them. Sound okay. good? Sounds good. Yeah, thank you, Ashley. Excellent. Thanks, Mary. Have a great, have a great day. Yes, great day. day. Yes. <laughs> have a great day. And all the best with the last year of your PhD. Thank you, Ashley.